Well, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we have something truly unique. It's the industry's first accurate AC4400, a GE locomotive by Scale Trains. Fresh release, hitting stores now, in stock now on their website. Let's see what you get in the box, do some testing and see what these are about, starting now. Unboxing the locomotive is simply pulling off the top inside a landscape manual. Reads like a booklet. 15 pages of information including configuration variables, functions, other settings, ex explanation of functions, how to add a decoder to the DC versions, these are both DCC and more, storing your model even in disassembly. Then the model itself is in the box and I will set aside my bias for UP and unbox a CSX for you guys today. So typical plastic slide clamshell deal. You have some parts in here, appears to be extra, two extra rotating bearing caps because that is a detail on these locomotives. As you can see, something is attached to the trucks. These are the truck immobilizers. Be careful, they will blend in pretty well. Now, this model also, I think, has an industry first painted wheel faces with a rust color. So people don't have to do that that are doing weathering, and I think that looks good. And it helps me remember that those truck immobilizers are on there, because they contrast a little bit off of the wheel. So we'll get all of these packaging parts out, and we'll be right back. A lot of these locomotives in this run are as delivered, but this specific CSX YN3 scheme is a 2021 plus scheme, which means you can see the uh, PTC antenna array on the roof and the reflective FRA striping along the side even though it blends in with that yellow sill you do see the separation there. So this is a present day on the rails locomotive as seen in the model. The UP one that we'll show you later is pre-PTC era for UP and then there's some as-delivered YN2 schemes and some other uh, Ferrosur and things in this run. On the front, you can see the grab irons very clearly because they're a different color than the nose. All those yellow grab irons contrasting with the nose is nice. Sand filler hatch, LED headlight. There's a cab door with a window. Number boards here that should be illuminated with LEDs. We'll see that in the lighting section of the video. Ditch lights, anti-climber with the MU receptacle, accessory hoses and brake line hose along with a scale trains coupler and your grab irons on the actual snow plow. Okay, as we turn you can see, they're a little hard to see, but there are some finely detailed windshield wipers. You can see the battery box door detail on the side. Even the coupler cut levers, the loops on each side of the anti-climber for that. Cab window sunshade, interior cab detail. Looks like maybe even a cab camera recorder right there. It's hard to tell. You guys are actually getting a better view all zoomed in than I am. 37 along the side with the little CSX lightning bolt. As we mentioned on the trucks before, there's spring detail. There's the rotating bearing caps and the components that kind of clamp down on the wheels when the brakes are applied are all there on the truck detail right in front of the fuel tank is your e-bell, your fuel tank sight glass along with emergency shutoff. Back here you have three dynamic brake fan grills right in a row. The horn, which is 
back here along with the exhaust CSX along the side with the CSX website tells you it's got to be a little modern if it's got a website but heck all our in all of our internet uh, has been around 25 plus years now it's hard to believe that and then on the back radiator fan grills are see-through you can see the fan housing it's a nice little see-through detail on there the brake wheel there's a truck chain detail which is molded not actual chain which should accommodate on the removal of the shell more of the back truck detail you can see the sanding line detail right there right in front of the wheel I'll show you the painted wheel face in a minute but as we go to the back you get a nice back profile of the hood you can see the radiator fan grills up top the rear light the rear sand filler hatch stanchions on the back all of the detail I already talked about including spare knuckle couplers there on the back or coupler knuckle yeah I think I said it right I always get that wrong I overthink that one more brake chain detail on this side there's the warning labels all along the side there I can try to zoom in for you but it's not gonna be it's not gonna go much further air reservoir detail on the side of the fuel tank there along with that plumbing steps with yellow sills so that it can be highly visible by the crew entering the cab and then we're back to the cab front again now the cab windows are like kind of a frosted glaze they're not too dark uh, they're dark enough but I think if you want to put cab figures in there you can um, and they'd still be seen with a silhouette I guess that's the argument for not darkening them completely but I just like to see the same tint that I see when I'm rail fanning which is a little darker than what I'm seeing here I think so there we are back on the front now so we're gonna show you the wheels a little closer it's hard to tell but the wheel faces that's a better view there wheel faces are that rust color so it makes it easier for those folks that are weathering that don't have to do that because a lot of times you have to apply track power and then take a brush slowly as the wheel rotates around and cause a big mess it's already done for you and it's really for folks like me that live in a fantasy world where nothing's weathered you can't tell on the side so I do actually plan on getting around to weathering one of these days, but it sure the heck is not a priority lately. Speaking of uh, bottom, there's your bottom of the locomotive. You've got covers on each set of gears for the wheels, obviously, to protect the gears from getting gunk inside of them. And there's some more fan grills there on that side as well. Here's a quick view of the antenna array. And you have a little separate component there that's like a white hatch looking deal it might be an escape hatch for emergencies I could be wrong and then you have all that molded in detail on the roof so you can see it's a quite detailed model all right here we have the UP unit there's another uh, I believe that's a battery box door that's been added that's patched out another huge spotting feature difference between the CSX is going to be your dome antenna versus the PTC antenna array and the dynamic brake fan grill arrangement instead of three you have two there there are some other differences as well but we won't cover them in the essence of time but I will zoom in so you can have a look you can see the brake chain detail and the brake lines and the truck detail a little better with it being gray versus black as I turn this around towards the back you can also see the end detail a little better but just a quick Vanna White 360 on this so that you can see the UP scheme here. If I zoom in here, there's some extra writing. I don't know if it's legible because we tend to go past Infinity Focus, but it has GE labels on it. I can read that part at least. And then your, there's your nose detail where you can see the windshield wipers a little better. The UP shield on the nose stanchions etc etc okay 
going to wait now and we're at ounces that's 22.7 ounces very very hefty for a diesel 644 grams that's one pound 6.7 ounces so pretty hefty should equate to some good pulling power but we'll check that as well we're going to use the user manual to go through this low sound decoder from esu it's factory installed in this let's hit f8 to start the prime mover up Zero's headlight. One is bell. Two horn. And it also tells you you can change the bell and horn with CV 164 and 163 respectively. F3 coupler clink. F4 is dynamic brakes, which you have to be moving in order to do it. F5 is the DPU lights, which is going to be the other end. F6, ditch lights, directional. And those are there. They're a little dimly lit, but I'll show you those in the dark. Seven's blank, eight is start up, nine's drive hold, which if you hit, it's going to keep the RPM of the speed step you're at so like for example if you're at speed step 10 and you have drive hold on then no matter what you do it'll increase and decrease the prime mover RPM but it will not change the speed of the locomotive 10 is independent brakes 11 radiator fan 12 headlight dimmer 13 air dryer we can try this 13 real quick hearing anything with 13 so I don't know if that's actually the air dryer or not 14's number boards on and off Fifteen's isolation switch which disconnects the motor drive if active 17 auto brake set release 18 sanding valve 19 short air let off 20 compressor 21 handbrake we'll try that So there's handbrake, you hear that clicking going on, cab door is 22, I don't know if you can really hear that one very well, there you hear it just a little bit, 23 engine hood door, 24 reverser center, 25 cooling shutters, 26 manual notches up and down with 27, 28 is manual notching logic. 29's load simulation, 30's air brake, or automatic brake, and 31 is fade out sound. So those are the new functions of the look sound decoder now going all the way up to 31. We'll check forward and reverse real quick and the speed control. Here's one speed step. set the accu track down here and we'll get an idea of speed control here in a second at one speed step it 
Definitely some jerking at one speed step out of the box. Has not been broken in. I can't guarantee you that it'll be that way. But configuration variables you can change to make it start off a little faster because this is 0.8 scale miles per hour per speed step. Going in reverse. I'm going to go one speed step in reverse just for a second so you can see the smoothness of the drive. And then I'm going to move it up until all of that is worked out. The decoder takes its sweet time and kind of moving once you put it in that direction. There's one. You can see it's not the smoothest. Two. A little quicker. Still not very smooth. Three, it starts to smooth out. I'd say about four, we're completely smooth. Still see a little lurch there. There's five. We're pretty smooth at five. So the drive isn't bad. It's just, I think they set the speed so low that it's going to have so it's going to have a hard time being smooth at those really really low speed steps now that we're in the dark you can see the truck lights shine down on the trucks and you do have walkway lights along with the ditch lights which do flash when the horn is blown just like csx would do So you definitely have bright enough of a light, and I think the lighting is actually spot on. It's pretty good. Turn the locomotive around so you can see the other walk light, walkway light near the stairwell and the other truck light or ground light. And when you go into DPU mode, so say this is at the back of a consist, and I go to hit the DPU function. I'm going to simply hit a 5 that's going to turn the DPU light on you can see that that'll be always on in, uh, even in going forward like say this is uh, in DPU service I'm going to start to move it forward that rear light's going to stay on and if I change directions that front light is going to stay on So I just verified that. So the lighting is working and pretty good job here in the lighting. Okay, I've got the UP version here. Different horn for the UP version. And the ditch lights stay lit. I still had the CSX on there for a second so you heard uh, those two together but I pulled that off and when pulling it off I noticed get about five six seconds of interruption before it actually shuts off which means it has a pretty good capacitor inside. I thought I was detecting some motor noise but when I turn off the sound it is whisper quiet so it must have just been the decoder having one of those background sounds of uh, the prime mover winding up but very quiet. All right pull test for you to see Like we have about the noise is just the wheels on the rail. It's peaking right about five. So that tells you that um, it's going to be able to pull about 75 HO scale freight cars by itself. So two could easily pull 150. It's pretty good pulling power. Here is a side profile so you can see the rotating bearing caps and how the trucks ride compared to the body. You can also see the window tint pretty accurately from this perspective. So everything looks pretty compact. I don't see any huge gaps in between the truck and the body. You've got your regular bell on the front of that fuel tank there versus the e-bell on the CSX. And some other underbody details that look pretty nice along with that truck chain detail. So 
There is your rotating bearing caps and a closer look at a side profile. Well, that's going to wrap up this review of these brand new AC4400 CWs from Scale Trains. Really well done. I checked about everything I could. I couldn't find anything really negative to note other than maybe a slight color temperature difference on one LED, but it could have been the blue from the body bouncing off. I'm not sure. We did have a low coupler. NMRA compliance other than that was good. So, you know, be sure to check them out. They, they sell out so fast. Scale Train's website is just, it's like it'll sell out in a heartbeat and then you got to chase it down. So I've been trying to stay on top of pre-orders and stuff because things just disappear so fast. I'm still looking for two BNSF ES44 ACs with PTC antennas because that, that slipped past me at some point. So anyway, overall great locomotives. Good drive, a little uh, jerky at slow speeds, but it smooths out. Good lighting. ESU is one of my favorite sound manufacturers, and it's a very uh, nicely well done locomotive with no broken parts. So with that said, I'll leave you with a run by of both of these, the UP and the CSX, and we'll see you next time right here on my channel. Take care.